Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about the anatomy of the foot. So first of all, what do we have in the foot? We, f we have the bones. So what are the bones that make the foot? If you guys look at the bones of the foot, you will find that you have the tarsals, you have metatarsals, and then you have phalanges. So what are the tarsals that we have? We have the topmost bone here. This is what we call the the talus all right the talus is the the bone that we can see on the top of the tarsals and then the calcaneus you guys is the bone that will make your heel all right so this is the talus and this is the calcaneus now we have here a couple of tarsal bones that we need to memorize and we can memorize them as the we have the cuboid first of all and looks cubical in shape square shaped we have the navicular and we have the three cuneiforms so think about them as a family this is the dad cuboid d the dad and this is their mom the navicular and this is the three cuneiforms their kids why am i saying the cuboid is the dad because this bone is the lateral bone and this bone is protecting the whole family right so that will make you to remember that the cuboid is the most lateral one of all of them and this is the one that occupies the whole space here from the lateral side and the mom is here proximally and then the cuneiforms are um, distal to it all right uh, what are the three cuneiforms we have? We have the medial one, intermediate, and lateral. And once we're done with the tarsals, we have the talus, calcaneus, cuboid, navicular, three cuneiforms. We will have the metatarsals that makes the tarsals to meet the phalanges. This is how we remember that this is metatarsals and this is tarsals. And of course, by now, everyone knows that. You're not foundation. Um, all right, so... This is the metatarsals, and then um, uh, at the end, as you reach the toes, you will find the phalanges. If you are in the regular ones, you have proximal, middle, and distal. If you are in the big toe, then you have only proximal and distal phalanges, all right? So these are the bones. And now, uh, these bones, you guys, is, are actually doing joints. So if you look at the uh, distal end of your tibia and fibula, you will remember that we said that we have the articular surface that articulates with the talus, the trochlea of talus. So this is trochlea, because you guys know trochlea, what does it mean? It means, it means that something is sliding over it, all right? It's like a pulley that uh, something is um, uh, sliding over it uh, that way, all right, rotating uh, over it. So this is a trochlea, which is a very important part of the bone because this is the part that will help tibia to rotate uh, or makes the talus itself to, ro to rotate um, down the tibia in dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, right, in the ankle joint. Uh, and also the fibula is, are, is participating. If you look at the articular surface of fibula, you will find that it's also participating in the ankle joint. And remember that the ankle joint, you're doing dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Remember, you can do it on yourself now. However, in the subtalar joint, which is the joint between talus and calcaneus, it's going to be the joint that will help you to do inversion and eversion. All right, so just make sure you know the difference between the joints and the function. Now, I like that um, simplified kind of labeling uh, by footeducation.com that shows you guys the most important joints of the foot. Now, I would like to know what joints do we have in the foot. Of, of course, we have uh, um, uh, so many bones there, so we need to know what are the major joints we have. So remember, just now we talked about the ankle joint and how that is formed between the trochlea of talus and the articular surface of tibia and also fibula is sharing in that. Although here it's named a tibiotalar, but still fibula is participating. And then if you look at the, uh, remember now that you have the mom, uh, toward your talus, so you will have talonavicular joint. We have a joint between the talus and the mom, okay? And also you have an articulation between the uh, uh, calcaneus and the cuboid. So if you guys look from the lateral aspect, you will see that the, the calcaneus is actually making articulation with the cuboid, and that is what we call the calcaneocuboid, 
all right and also talus is articulating with the calcaneus and this is a very important joint talus calcaneus the big guys here they will do the subtalar joint so the subtalar it's going to be below the talus and it's going to be with the most important bone we have which is the calcaneus so don't ever remember uh, forget don't ever forget the subtalar joint which is between talus and calcaneus don't ever forget your ankle joint which is between the tibia fibula and talus above so talus is a very important bone above and below here and then also again talus with the medial bone talonavicular calcaneus with the lateral bone calcaneocuboid and also you have uh, um, an articulation between uh, yeah, yeah this is here from here and there uh, and also we have uh, a talocalcineo cuboid. There is a meeting point here where three of them participate together and that is what we call the talocalcineo cuboid because talus articulates with the cuboid and it also articulates, uh, sorry, calcaneus, uh, talus articulates with calcaneus and it also articulates with the cuboid. So remember, uh, laterally between the calcaneus and cuboid you have a joint medially between the talus and navicular you have a joint and don't ever forget the subtalar joint between talus and calcaneus and then you will have uh, joints uh, between the tarsals and the bases of metatarsals and of course we call it tarsal metatarsals and also you have between metatarsals and phalanges and we call them metatarsal phalangeal joints and then you have the interphalangeal joints proximal and distal Okay, so these are the major joints we have. I hope I didn't forget anything more important. Now, what about the ligaments? It's very simple and easy. Just think about it. Laterally, you have your fibula, okay? And down you have the calcaneus. And also you have the talus. So what are the big bosses of the tarsals? Talus and calcaneus. You will find them uh, inserting their, their nose into everything, okay? So... What joints do we have? What are the lateral ligaments? The lateral ligaments are going to be the ligaments that needs to connect your lateral bone to the structures important around it. So what are these basically? They are going to be calcaneofibular. They are going to be anterior talofibular and posterior talofibular because talus is very important. So it will make articulation anterior and posterior. This is not only with the fibula. This is also going to happen with the tibia. So in order to memorize the ligaments that makes your medial ligaments of your foot remember that the the the, the rule is applying also here you will have posterior tibio uh, talar anterior tibio talar why do we call it here tibio because guys we usually give the first name to the most important important bone tibia is very important so it should become the beginning of everything however laterally talus and calcaneus are more important than fibula, okay? So they will take the first part of the bone. So again, talus is very important. It will have anterior and posterior ligaments with the fibula. Calcaneus is important, so it, it will have a, a ligament with the fibula. Anterior, posterior, talofibular, and calcaneofibular. Tibia is the same. It's very important articulation with the, uh, I mean, ligaments connection with the talus. So I have anterior and posterior Tibiotalar ligaments because tibia is very important bone, so the name of tibia should come first. And then we also have the other tarsals, which are the calcaneus and navicular, so we need to do connections with them. So it's going to be tibio navicular and tibio calcaneal. And because here we have four ligaments, you guys, we're going to call it the deltoid ligament. And remember that I told you deltoid in Latin means number four in, sorry, not Latin Greek. Number four in, Gle in Greek. So deltoid muscle is actually triangular in shape. They call it deltoid because the shape is triangular, looks like number four in Greek. So number four means we have four ligaments. All right, so this is the deltoid ligament, and it's very important for the support of the medial aspect of the ankle joint. Um, we also have a very important ligament here, which is the plantar calcineo-navicular ligament, because we need to have a connection between the navicular and the uh, uh, sustentaculum tili of uh, calcaneous bone. Uh, sustentaculum tili, we're going to talk about it uh, later on, but just remember once more, we have 
ligaments connecting the talus to the fibula anterior and posterior and one with the calcaneus and then the tibia it has two with the talus one with calcaneus one with the navicular and then last connection we need it here is the calcaneo navicular ligament because we have a projection of the calcaneus we call it sustentacular tili and we're going to talk about it later on as we proceed now what do we have down here we have very important two ligaments we need to we can say three ligaments we need to talk about them the the first one which was we call the spring ligament because usually you will find them telling you you guys the medial arch of the foot is supported by deltoid and spring deltoid and spring ligaments the deltoid now we know it it's the two ligaments between the talus and tibia one with the calcaneus, one with the navicular. Now, what about the spring ligament? The spring ligament is basically the plantar ligament that will connect the calcaneus with the navicular bone. So remember that this is your spring ligament. And if you feel that it's difficult to remember, just remember that on, in the medial aspect here, in the medial aspect, the mom is here. All right, so the mom is here. If I have deltoid connecting my tibia to everything medially, I have spring connecting the mom to the calcaneus because we are telling you the deltoid and the spring are uh, um, supporting the medial uh, uh, arch. All right, so it's going to be medial. What do I have medially? It's just the calcaneus and the navicular, the mom. All right, so this is the, the uh, spring ligament. Now, what about the plantar ligament? Plantar ligament is a ligament in the plantar aspect of my foot. I have a long one and I have a short one. Do you think that the mom will have a connection with calcaneus and the dad is going to just look at them like that without having also a connection? Definitely not. So as the mom is getting a connection with the big boss back there, which is the lowermost tarsal bone, of course there will be a connection between the dad and the calcaneus. And this is what we call the short plantar ligament. It's going to be between the calcaneus and the cuboid. Now, I have a ligament that covers the short plantar, I call it long plantar, and that is going to be between the, the calcaneus and it's going to get connected to the cuboid also, but it will extend all the way to the base of the last uh, metatarsals. How can I differentiate between these two in a real specimen? If you guys see the ligament covering this long fibularis longus tendon, I talked about the fibularis longus and how it goes all the way to the base of the first metatarsal. Okay, if you can find it covering that, this is definitely the long plantar ligament. If it's very short between the calcaneus and the dad, the, the uh, calcaneo cuboid, this is going to be the short plantar ligament. All right. Uh, now, um, in this, we need to talk about the structures deep to the flexor and extensor retinaculum. I already mentioned that in the previous uh, videos, but we can just say it once more. Now, what is the flexor retinaculum? The flexor retinaculum is going to be this fibrous connective tissue that wants to connect your medial malleolus. Because remember, in the flexor and extensor retinaculum, my reference is medial malleolus. So if the ligament is, is, the, if, is the fibrous connective tissue is connecting my med medial malleolus, to the calcaneus um, from the uh, medial aspect this is going to be a flexor it's retaining uh, uh, or supporting the tendons of flexor muscles and remember that i told you the order of the tendons will be tom does hats and he's throwing his hats um, and uh, behind him so remember that behind medial malleolus medial to lateral you have tom tibialis posterior tendon does digitorum longus if you want all the structures you will say very nice because v goes to the vessels nice goes to the nerves uh hats is gonna be the last tendon if you need to remember only the tendons then tom does hats if you want to remember everything then tom does very nice hats all right so uh, and that refers to to the tibialis muscle and then the digitorum and halluses of course everything is longus because they are coming from the leg if they were coming from the calcaneus to the digits we will call them privus because all of the foot muscles or most of them if not all the origin is going to be the calcaneus somehow all right so if it's coming from the calcaneus this is going to be a privus 
Uh, what about the extensor retinaculum? In the extensor retinaculum, guys, you can find two types of fibers, one connecting the distal end of tibia to fibula, and another one that is Y-shaped, coming from the calcaneus, all the way to the medial malleolus, and it all the way to the plantar aponeurosis deep down here. And that is going to be the uh, old extensor retinaculum. Uh, uh, so these are the attachments of the upper one and the lower one and deep to them remember your reference is always in the flexor and extensor retinaculum is going to be the medial malleolus and medial to lateral it's going to be tom does hats all right so tom does hats uh, sorry uh, so tom has dogs and pigs tom has dogs and pigs what is pigs it's the peroneus tertius another name fibularis tertius where is it here? Remember that I told you previously that they have a common, um, um, they have a common uh, sheath, a uh, synovial sheath that wraps around them. If you can see the tendons going all the way to the digits, we call them digitorum. If we can see a separate tendon going to the base of the fifth metatarsal, this is going to be uh, peroneus tertius or fibularis tertius and that's also because the peroneus tertius or fibularis tertius seem to be uh, a muscle that is a continuation of the digitorum because some of the fibers of the origin of this shares with the digitorum um, so you can see the tendon of the digitorum next to the muscles of the fibularis tertius that's because they are surrounded together and once you see the insertion you will come to know that this is fibularis tertius and this is the tendon of the uh, digitorum longus all right so tom uh, has dogs and pigs tom has tom does hats and throws behind them this is behind medial malleolus in front of medial malleolus Tom has dogs and pigs, dogs and pigs. Dogs is the digitorum, pigs or uh, peroneus tertius or fibularis tertius. And Tom here is the tibialis anterior and has is the uh, extensor hallucis longus. Now, coming to a very important uh, topic in foot, which is the arches of the foot. And now since everyone understands the story of the cuboid dad, the cuneiform, sorry, the navicular mom and the cuneiform kids, everyone will be able to tell the construction of the arches of the foot and because everyone knows the ligaments now and from the previous videos of the leg everyone understands the tendons you will be able to say what is the support of each one of the arches now if you think about the medial arch this is uh, the arch that you get to see a lot of bones there are nine bones three tars three big tarsals three cute um, uh, kids um, uh, tarsals also and three metatarsals so what would be the three big definitely calcaneus talus and navicular because this is the medial here is the mom all right so the calcaneus talus and navicular and then what are the three cutie ones the three cuneiforms what about the metatarsals which ones definitely the proximal ones right or medial ones the medial the uh, we if we are counting from the big toe then one two three metatarsals all right so here are the metatarsals here so the big tarsals the qt3 the kids because we are medially we are in the mom and her kids all right and then the first three metatarsals this is the construction now what about the um support Wow, it's very easy because I have spring ligament, which was the connection between the calcaneus and the mom, the calcineonavicular. I have the deltoid, which is the connections with the tibia. I had with the tibia anterior and posterior tibiotalar. I had with the tibia one with the calcaneus. All right. Uh, 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 so and then I had with the tibia the one uh, with the uh, 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 calcaneus, all right, and the navicular, all right. So these are the four deltoid ligaments: tibio-navicular, tibio-calcaneal, and uh, uh, tibio-talar anterior and posterior. So this is common sense that these are the ligamentous support for the medial arch. And what about the bones of the uh, lateral uh, arch? It's very simple. Of course, I have the calcaneus supporting me laterally, all right? And of course, the other tarsal would be the dad because this is the cuboid. So I have two tarsals here supporting me. And I have the fourth and fifth metatarsals because this is the last two. If I have here medial three, 
metatarsals then I have here lateral two metatarsals and the lateral bones the dad is laterally and the calcaneus is laterally and then what do you think about the uh, transverse arch? The transverse arch is as if you're getting a line and that line is just between the cuneiforms level and the bases of metatarsals. So what do you think you will go through? I will go through, through the kids and their dad laterally. So I will go through the, uh, the, the kids and their dad uh, laterally, okay? So guys... Um, if you look at the uh, connection, sorry, if you, if you look at the uh, connection between this and that, you will find the cuboid, the dad, you will see the cuneiforms, three of them here, and then you will see the bases of metatarsals, five of them. So it makes sense that my transverse arch is going through the dad and his kids only with their connections with the metatarsals so what are the bones that make your transverse arch is going to be your cuboid three cuneiforms there is e here and the five metatarsals now what's going to be the uh, sorry i forgot the ligaments here what's going to be the ligament uh, support for the lateral longitudinal arch it's going to be the plantar ligament remember guys the ligament uh, the plantar ligament when i told you that the spring is making connection with the mom so the short plantar will be with the dad so calcaneo cuboid and another one covering that and extending all the way to metatarsals that was laterally guys remember if you look at this picture that was actually lateral so those guys laterally are supporting the lateral arch and here the spring ligament and the deltoid ligament the connections with the medial guys is going to be the, the support medially, right? So it makes sense that the long and short plantar will support the lateral longitudinal arch. Now, what about the transverse arch? Actually, short and long plantar are, uh, ligaments are very important. So they will also support the transverse arch, uh, mostly long, more than short. And because you guys can see that the long is going all the way to the bases of these metatarsals, so definitely it's going to support your transverse arch here, all right? Because you guys know that it's between the uh, cuboid cuneiforms and the bases of those guys, so definitely the long should support them. And also there is a transverse ligament, Okay, so transverse metatarsal ligament definitely will to support the transverse arch, so it makes sense. Now, what is going to be the support of the tendons? It's very quite uh, um, simple and easy. First of all, if you have a medial arch, think about that all muscles of the hallux will support it. If you have a lateral arch, think about all muscles of the digiti minimi will support it. And now what else? Remember you guys when I told you in the leg um, in the leg videos that tibialis posterior tendon and fibularis longus tendons are very important because the, the fibularis longus it, go, it goes all the way lateral to the base of the first metatarsal. So this is a very important tendon. It has the ability to support everything. So fibularis longus should not slip out of your mind in any exam if they are asking about the support of any arch. And also tibialis posterior is very important because it gets attached to the, ba to the bases of the metatarsals in the middle and it also almost goes to all of the tarsal bones. So it needs to support the transverse and medial arches, the post uh, tibialis posterior tendon. It's very important. Uh, tendon as well and um, uh, and then what else do we have great um, uh, so now we know this and that remember that the lateral longitudinal arch is going to be supported with all guys coming from fibula and it makes sense so i wrote here the fibularis family tendons so you have support from all of the fibularis, longus, previs, and tertius. So it makes sense because fibula is a lateral bone. So all the tendons coming from fibula and getting attached to anything here laterally is going to support the lateral arch. All right. And um, uh, what else? We said that anything digiti minimi should support. And also remember that the extensor digitorum guys, brothers, which is longus and previs, is going to support the lateral arch. And here the flexor. So the medial arch, remember, supported by flexor tendons. Lateral arch, remember, supported by extensor tendons. All right. So 
uh, remember that the extensor uh, supporting it. So we have extra guys here uh, other than the fibularis people and it makes sense also fibularis. The, the remaining thing for you to memorize is that the extensor thing goes to the lateral and the flexor thing goes to the medial. All right. Uh, that way you will remember uh, uh, everything and uh, tibialis anterior is also supporting the medial arch and uh, it also makes sense because tibialis anterior if you guys look at tibialis anterior can you guys see the tibialis anterior going where all the way here okay to the base of the first metatarsals uh, first metatarsal so it makes sense that it supports the the medial arch okay so guys this is very simple and you just remember where are the tendons of the most important muscles and it will make sense for you and uh, these are just um, uh, pictures of the arches bigger uh, than the previous uh, but i think here everything is just uh, summarized in a nice way now let's go ahead and see some of the important stuff we have in the foot remember that i told you we have something called a sustentacular Teli, sustentacular teli. Can you guys see the projection of the calcaneus? Sustentacular teli is a bone that kind of supports the talus. Can you guys see? It's a shelf-like projection of bone that supports the talus. That's why we call it sustentacular teli. Teli doesn't mean that it's a bone or it's a part of talus, but it means it supports. Sustentacular means supports talus, but it's a projection in calcaneus. Why this projection is important? Because it has a groove down, and that groove is going to be for the uh, tendon of flexor halosis longus of what the FHL the flexor halosis longus can you guys see it goes all the way to the hallux don't ever forget that because if you have a fracture or a problem to the sustentacular to lie the tendon the most commonly affected or not most commonly the most um, affected tendon is gonna be the FHL uh, what else will be affected first of all it should be the FHL the flexor halosis longus if if you need to uh, say more than one structure at affected by fracture of sustentacular toli, then remember the uh, uh, Tom does hats uh, kind of thing because this is the medial malleolus and this is behind you. So this is related to the flexor tenaculum. So it's going to be the Tom does hats. Think about all the tendons running, rope, looping around this bone. So if this is affecting the flexor halus longus, if this is affected um, I mean, if you if you need to say more than one structure affected, then make sure you know all the guys that run behind the medial malleolus, which is the tibialis posterior flexor duodenum longus and flexor halus longus. All right, and um, if you want to see the tendons deep running deep down here, here is the flexor tenaculum, and then you can see that the flexor halus longus goes all the way to the hallux, and then the digitorum goes all the way to the digits. All right, and then the tibialis posterior goes all the way to the base of the first. Uh, tibialis posterior goes to many uh, structures, actually, not only base of first. It goes to most of the uh, tarsal bones and then base of second, third, and fourth. All right, so here we have the three tendons. And uh, now we're coming to the foot layers. Um, how can we remember the structure that make the foot layer? Uh, here we will say thanks to Disney characters um, that will help us to remember the layers of the foot. So um, uh, layer one and layer three are going to be similar. It's going to be something related to the hallux and the digiti minimi. So we have the Incredible Hulk and we have the Minnie Mouse. And this is just going to help you to remember the structure that makes the first and third layer. It's going to be structures related to those guys. So what would be uh, the structures? Uh, first of all, in the first and third layer, the structures we have are three muscles. Three muscles. I have two abductors, one flexor. Two abductor, one flexor. In the third layer, I have two flexors, one adductor. I have the opposite. So if I have here two abs, one flexor, I have here two flexors and one ad. It's the opposite. Another opposite I have is that. If the abductors I have for the first and last ones, the Hulk and the Minnie Mouse, which is abductor uh, halluses and abductor digiti minimi, I have a flexor digitorum privis. 
So I have only two words here, two words, which is abductor halluses, uh, abductor digiti minimi, and then the flexor is going to be uh, uh, previs. It, ha- it will have an extra word, which is flexor digitorum previs. Uh, however, if you look at the third layer, it's going to be the opposite. Two flexors, and the flexors have the word previs, so two previs, and one adductor halluses only. So whenever you have flexor in any of these layers, it w- should have the word previs. So if you have abductor or adductor, you don't have previs. Right? So what is the first layer? Two abductors, abductor halluses, abductor digitorum minimi, and flexor digitorum previs. And the third layer, you have one flexor halluses previs, the flexor dig- digitorum minimi previs, and adductor halluses only.